and welcome to Theorycraft. I'm Ben, that's Jack, and Boris, our very little friend, who's a bit of a pain in the backside, but we love him all the same. We are two dudes and a furry thing that rant, rave and ramble about TV series gone by, as well as ones that are coming in the future. For this week, it's my topic on DC Comics and their HBO series that are coming out within the next couple years. My top three ones for today are going to be Justice League Dark, Strange Adventures, and the Green Lantern series. So, let's get ready to <laughs> run! <laughs> but of course, we wouldn't be this show without our furry little friend having something to say as well. What do you say, Boris? Welcome to Theorycraft, peasants. Be yes. nice to the subs, will ya? Yes, unfortunate, Sorry. unfortunately, <laughs> folks, Boris is still slightly feral. We haven't really sort of re reined him in much. He's still trying to get used to his communist ways. But there we go. But yes, for God knows how long, DC have been the name staple of the trio that is Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman and all of their series gone by. Over the past 10 years, we've had a few more through the CW, but not by much. And then lo and behold, this year we've had news of all these wonderful HBO series that are coming out. And the first one that I really, really cannot wait for is Justice League Dark, just because it is the most bonkers side of DC's magic side. When you got... <sighs> You got a man from Lanche Manchester where he's called John Constantine, he's called Hellblazer, and he's just basically doesn't give two shits about what he does and just fights demons. That's literally what he is. We've had his own show, he's been part of Legends of Tomorrow. Yeah. And although we have had the Keanu Reeves movie, I personally, even though I haven't seen much of it, I just don't see Keanu Reeves as a gruff, gritty guy to be Constantine. It will forever be Matt Ryan because he's just got it down to a T. I mean, we haven't got any confirmation yet as to who's playing who. It's all speculation for the moment. But the main people that are part of the team are generally John Constantine, Dead Man, Zatanna, and then there are a handful of other magic users in between that have been a bit of a sketchy one that I just don't understand the reason behind it, but there we go. There's the very first character that I want to try and explain to Jack, because he's not much of a DC man. He's called Detective Chimp. And yeah, yeah, you told me about Detective Chimp in like a chat that we were having like ages back. So the it's origin, basically, yeah, basically a chimp Sherlock Holmes, pretty right? much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the origin of him here on this lovely website that I always refer to, Comic Vine, basically is a chimpanzee imbued with the magic qualities by the Fountain of Youth. Detective Chimp is super smart, member of the Shadow Pact, and Justice League Dark, and that's pretty much his general gist. Борис Белифс за идею в детектив Чимпистроли Бенанс. Yeah, he is a bit bananas. Okay. But this is what the whole point of Justice League Dark is, that it is, quite frankly, just very weird characters that are linked with magic. Well, it's kind of like we were talking like we were talking a while, but we've had so much seriousness from DC that it's nice that we finally get to see some bonkers material finally yes i mean the series doom patrol has proven without a doubt that you can have a show that is completely and utterly just off the rails insane but dc yeah but, but doom patrol is just funny as hell i love but it. that's the thing that's why i love it and it's probably why everybody loves it it's just, but, it's just bonkers it's just a load of nonsense but it works <laughs> but this is it i mean at the end of the day we can only have so much seriousness. That's why I just couldn't get my head round the Batman v Superman movie. It was just over the top serious. It's like, but he's an alien. Like, yeah, he could easily destroy the world, but so could Batman. 
Like, with the amount of technology he's got, he could easily burn the world. Boris would like to be a member of Justice League Dork. I have been practicing my skills in the Dork Orcs. Ekio Volko. Boris, I think you need to retry your magic because it turned up here instead. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, I see, look, I see a little tear coming up. It's all right, darling. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, dear, yeah, just like dearie, Batman, dearie. Like Batman Superman just it's just like the whole concept you've only got like what's Bruce Wayne's true power being rich basically and being able to buy and create any toy that he wants Superman <laughs> can do next to anything so already for me that's just like the weakest concept ever and I don't, I don't even need to watch the film just to know what like what's going on because I've seen so many other clips on uh, you know maybe some certain sites online where you can see movies that are not on maybe uh streaming services yet but uh but I'll yeah say nothing else apart from that but yeah after see after seeing it i was just like oh like it can't come on give me a break it's superman versus batman i'm with superman all the way which should be pretty obvious to anybody well this is it but then to be fair i was wondering other than the obvious the characters that I mentioned, where you've got Zatanna, Constantine, and Dead Man, there are quite a few other very obscure magic characters within DC that I'd love to either see them be a brief member of or even an actual constant member of throughout this series. So, one of the very, very obscure characters that I think is absolutely hilarious is a guy called Buana Beast. So, his powers are basically taking the taking multiple animals and then Dragon Ball Z fusing them it, temporarily to create a new animal that he can use, and that's pretty much it. Uh huh. <laughs> so, but, I mean, uh, everyone watching this after the fact, I'm learning along with you guys. So. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's not magic, but. It kind of is in a way where it's not logical. <laughs> but, I mean, his powers come from radiation, that's fair enough. But it's such a bizarre concept of a character that I cannot see how he can't be a member of the Justice League Dark without him either being some random shy, shy side character or just there for the sake of being an Easter egg. Well, the thing is, Ben, we've had so many like obvious characters like Batman, Superman, Batman, Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, Batman, Superman, Batman, Superman. You know, we've had like so many of the obvious ones that everybody knows and the ones that have all been done to death. So it's nice that finally we're getting a chance where, well, nobody thought that like Spider-Man was going to succeed and look what happened there. But now we're getting a chance to introduce like some lesser known characters and give something new to people, which I'm excited to see. I, like these characters I've never even heard of, but... I'm quite excited to see what new stuff comes out of DC. So it's nice that we're getting a well, like it's nice that we like we've waited long enough for a big change. Definitely. I mean, there are there are with most comics. There's always going to be characters that try to mimic one another to a degree. And there was one character I came across that I swear is like DC's ripoff of Daredevil. So. The idea that Daredevil is blind, but he can sensorize like people through like sound waves or whatever. Yeah. So there is a magic user within DC called Mister E, which in itself sounds a bit of a bit Mr. of a mystery. Yeah, but he is a blind man that can see evil. I kid you not, okay? He is a blind man that has the ability to see evil. Just because. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's... The... <laughs> the only thing is, that don't make sense. Evil is subjective. Evil's a point of view, so... Well, this is my argument as well. It's like, it's such an obscure thing. Like, how do you see evil? How, like, do, you how do you discern what it, what's good and what's bad? How do you discern that? This is it. I mean, I suppose the one definitive wave is that all demons smell of sulfur. So I suppose that could be an interesting plot that you could say that he could smell the sulfur on people or demons or whatever. 
don't know. Maybe they might smell a crab paste. You never know. <laughs> That's a bit fishy to me, mate. But there. I'm doing something beyond that, but yeah, <laughs> don't want to get told off by the YouTube police. But yeah, so like, is that the, like the main characters which have been listed so far, or is there well, any more? Well, they haven't been listed at all. It's just me speculating on the idea of what magic characters they could use because. Like I say, it, the whole point of Justice League Dark is it's all people linked to mystical parts of the DC universe. Yeah. I mean, the, there is an on-again, off-again guy that everybody knows of called Swamp Thing, which is quite an important part of the whole <sighs> mystical landscape on Earth in DC Comics, where he's connected to the green, which is basically the entire lifeblood of all plant life within the planet yeah but i don't know if they could bring him in because the series itself that dc did on its own it was amazing but it was a bit of a letdown in terms of just how very little they tried in terms of actually making him interesting because yeah. despite the fact that the series was all about swamp thing very little of it had Swamp Thing in it. From what I can remember watching back on it, there'd be moments where he'd fight like these random things within like the whole show where like some random demon thing turned up or whatever. But at the same point, it was just Swamp Thing, I think he only turned up by the end of the second episode, and then he'd only crop back up once in a blue moon to save the main female lead in the entire show who, while she was an interesting actress, wasn't a very interesting character. No. But that's just me. But then there is a guy within DC Comics that they tried making him more interesting and gritty during the New 52, which would be quite an interesting idea to tie into Justice League Dark, called Animal Man. Now, the name itself just sounds a bit pathetic. But the whole idea of him is that he is able to basically tap into the red, which is the all life on Earth and the universe, apparently, have connections to this mystical energy which ties all living beings together, which allows Animal Man to replicate their abilities. Which, to me, actually sounds pretty freaking cool, to be honest. But then there are some inconsistencies where it's said, they say it's meant to be relative to a human, but then you've got like bigger animals where if you were to scale it down, it wouldn't be as powerful, but he somehow has the same strength as the animal, even though it's like, yeah. Wait, it's the whole... how, how, how does that work then? Well, it's the same argument with Ant-Man where we had the other day where when he gets bigger, surely he would be less useful, but somehow he is more, he's stronger. Yeah, but, so like, but apparently, like, his weight and everything doesn't change. But say if, like, he shrunk to the size of a pea and decided to go up into a tree and sit on a branch, he'd break the branch. But then when he becomes giant, he still breaks the tree. Like, it, there's so many inconsistent. Like, I love comics, don't get me wrong, but when you come up with rules, don't just chop and change it just for the sake of making it more interesting. Be consistent to what you're trying to sell, so then people like me and Jack and Boris can actually follow along. Yeah, hence the all like, and then we'll come on YouTube and moan about it. Hence why this YouTube channel exists in the first place. Of course, like we love to rant in here. That's the whole point. But yeah, like I say, with Justice League Dark, we don't have much confirmation yet. We have no idea who's playing who, wow. but the general gist is that. Obviously, there's going to be Constantine, there's going to be Satana, and there's got to be Dead Man. That's the main three for the whole trio of Justice League Dark. Well, I'm not sure just because, like, obviously, we know like the multiverse, like the Doctor Strange's multiverse is coming out. Uh, well, I say it's soon. Probably is not likely to be soon, but yeah. Also, by the way, uh, just a little bit of an extra. If anybody is seeing on the Doctor Strange uh, multiverse of madness. Uh, the three Peter Parker, Peter Parker actors, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, are not in it. So if you ever see, there's a lot of those fake posters going about and a lot of fake uh, videos floating about. Yeah, they're not in it. So 
Not as far as I know yet, so. <laughs> no, I mean, well, it's a lot of speculation, full stop with comic book stuff lately because of COVID, but hey ho. Yeah, but now, like, it was like, it was funny because, like, we had literally nothing, no news, nothing. Now it's like been an avalanche of just content now. Yes, just everything's just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. But the next series that I wanted to try and wrap my head around because there's been no genuine news is the idea of Strange Adventures, which, according to Screen Round, which in yeah, itself this, this is very new to me so i'm learning with everybody else here well with screen ran i'm always a bit dubious when they make posts because they have yeah, been more I, wrong I, than I, I right see why. but supposedly it's meant to be an anthology series that's meant to be a cautionary tale set in a world where superpowers exist right but i hope but to a degree, it bases like its main thing on a character called Adam Strange, who was an Earth scientist that gets picked up by a Zeta beam from a planet called Ron and basically becomes the hero of the planet. But there is a bit of a iffiness with it where the teleportation, because that wasn't what it was intended for, it only has a limited amount of time before he's randomly zapped back to Earth. So yeah, I remember you trying to explain to me the logistics of this. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a very obscure character that I need to do more research on myself. But I'm hoping both with the Strange Adventures and the Green Lantern series, they try and explore more on the cosmic side of DC. Because so far with the movies, we've seen, obviously, Superman being an alien. And we've seen Steppenwolf, one of the apocalyptic gods. And the parademons, even though they look god-awful. And that's about it, as far as I'm aware. Because you, you had Kryptonians in Superman, Man of Steel. Yes. But then that's it. Like We haven't had much in the way of aliens at all and yet there is so much potential in the whole idea of it because well if yeah well this is it i mean if we just like take green lantern for example if you're going to try and take something like the concept of space and so on and the whole cosmic side and there's a lot more to the green lantern than just the one ring there's there's so much to the green lantern as you already know mm -hmm. but it just seems the it kind of when you do movies about that kind of thing not always but a lot of the time it's the death nail because there's only so much you can cram into about an hour and a half two hours so hopefully it's something that could be done right this time because the subject of space and cosmic and all that is very it, it, it's vast it's big yes <laughs> i mean one of my one of the weirder sides of dc is actually linked to superman there is a character in it called bizarro and from what I remember, I mean, there's been different iterations over the years, but basically it's like this weird clone of Superman that has his powers completely flipped. And instead of him being super intelligent, he's like incredibly stupid. And in the whole DC universe, there is actually a world called Bizarro World. So basically yeah. everything that Bizarro does is in reflect like the complete polar opposite to Superman. So <sighs> the idea is that when he destroys stuff, he thinks he's saving the world. When he's fixing stuff, he thinks he's destroying. Sorry, when he's destroying the world, he thinks he's fixing it. When he's destroying the world, when he's fixing the world, he thinks he's destroying it. Oh, we we finally got there eventually. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it was it's my head trying to wrap it around. So when, when he's fixing, so when he's fixing the world, he's destroying the world. When he's destroying the world, he's fixing it. Yes. Right. Got it. <laughs> yeah, but it gets even weirder. Okay, so there is like an entire Justice League as well. They're all Bizarro versions of the like Justice League we already got. Right. So you. So got, they, like, is that the same content with like the opposites? So you have right. Bizarro Batman, who is a complete coward. You got Bizarro Flash, who's fat, and he has a mustard stain that's like lightning bolt shaped instead of it being a lightning bolt. Yeah. You got Wonder Woman, who 
Oh, God, I can't remember it all now. But Bizarro World in itself is just a very oh, obscure. But the worst bit of all is that it's actually cube shaped. The whole planet is a cube. Yeah. <laughs> Very true, Boris. Very, very just, true. Just, just put this on, all right? Just put that on. Just shut up. Just shut <laughs> up. And keep that on for a minute. But with the idea of Bizarro World, I would love to just see the idea of like a really weirdly CGI'd Henry Cavill with the concept of Bizarro, because instead of having uh, super breath that's cold, he has super breath that's fire. So instead of heat vision, it's ice vision. Yeah, so like instead of like super strength, he's super weak. Well, no, that's the weird thing is he does have super strength. But it, he should have super strength, though. Yeah, I know. It's it's a very odd concept, Bizarro, in itself, which is why he's called Bizarro, because he is bizarre. But, uh, I mean, when was he first established? I think it was like in the very, I think it was like 1950s. Yeah, 1958 was his first appearance. And yeah. it was a poor attempt at cloning Superboy because it was like this like prequel series they'd done. But the clone ended up being like a really dodgy version of him. So it ended up being like every time Superboy saved the day, Bizarro had to undo it all thinking that that's what needed to be done. Right, I see. And obviously, over the years, things have changed. Things have gone a bit more wacky than anything else. But the other thing as well is, like, there are quite a lot of very highly powerful alien characters that we've yet to actually come across in DC, especially against the Justice League. So you've got one guy, which is called Despero, which is a very well-known Green Lantern character. Uh... Here we go. So he's basically he has three eyes. His third eye he can use to try and like control people's minds. Right. And uh, he's a very he's a very weird character. If I can try and get a decent image of him. There we go. Okay. So, I can't remember much about his abilities, which is why I got the page here with me at the moment. So, essentially, he's got lot. He's got astral projection, blast power, claws, energy manipulation, enhanced mutation, flight, healing, heat vision, hypnosis, illusion casting, invulnerability, possession, psionic. Reality manipulation, stamina, super speed, super strength, telekinesis, telepathy, teleport, and on armed combat. Yeah. Take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a character that I think would have been better suited as a Justice League enemy than Steppenwolf. Because the whole idea of like, Steppenwolf ties into Darkseid, which is just like... A whole other thing in itself in DC that you just can't just randomly plop in. You have to build up to him. He is like, he's more powerful than Thanos. And you saw what Thanos did in like Infinity War. Yeah, never mind you, Thanos only did what he could do with the Infinity Gauntlet and the Stone. True. But then Thanos in the comics is a hell of a lot more powerful than what we saw in the films. Oh, yeah. But again, like, compared to Darkseid, Darkseid. Is literally the living embodiment of evil. Like he cannot die. He has a body, but that's only as a way of like communicating with people in the universe. He cannot die. He is living evil embodiment. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like he has an ability called these omega omega beams, which basically nobody can outrun. And if you get hit by them, you die. You cannot like come back from it. The only person that has, of course, is Batman. And they just... I, to this day, I hate the fact that it was 
Batman that managed to get away with this. The fact that because DC was so paranoid of losing because the... Because Batman gets away with sodding everything. Yes. But basically, when Batman got hit by the Omega Beams, he didn't... Well, he died, but it was actually a clone of him, but it was also him being time-displaced, and he ended up becoming his own ancestors throughout time that were also Bat-themed versions of himself. Because comics. Yeah, or just because DC hit the panic button. <laughs> Pretty much. But this is what I'm looking forward to most with both DC's Green Lantern series and the Strange Adventures is that there's so much potential in terms of the cosmic side of things because there is no limit to what they can bring in. I mean, there are so many different alien beings within DC Comics itself, but yet they've had no real explanation as to who, where, or where they may be. I mean, Green Lantern movie he had with Ryan Reynolds. You saw the different Green Lanterns, but you never got much of an explanation as to who they were or where they came from. No, which there were explanations, like the, like the different rings and everything. It's actually pretty cool if you do your research on yeah. it. It's actually really cool. I mean, the thing is, with the series that's coming out of Green Lantern, they've recently revealed who, in terms of which Green Lanterns they're picking from, which I'm quite confused as to why they've chosen these ones specifically. Uh, let's have a look. So... Uh, from what I remembered on the article, it was going to be Jessica Cruz, yeah. Alan Scott, Guy Gardner, and there was one other character which I cannot remember. But the thing is, yes, Alan Scott is the very first Green Lantern, but his Green Lantern ring was completely different to the core Green Lantern, which is the other ones are tied to originally. But the other thing as well is that they've gone the New 52 route, where they've brought in Alan Scott as the gay version of himself, which... I don't have any issues with. I think that there is need for more diversity. But even in the New 52, they didn't keep that for long because people were outraged that they ruined Alan Scott's backstory because in the comics, Alan Scott in the original ones wasn't gay. He had a daughter with a villain called Rose and Thorn who ended up having a daughter called Jade. And by transmutation of... Alan Scott's exposure to his Green Lantern ring, she had Green Lantern abilities without the ring or the battery. Yeah. And for some bizarre reason, her skin was green. Because... Yeah. But she is a very interesting character because she ends up being, for a brief time, the girlfriend to a character in Green Lantern called Kyle Rayner, which is my favourite Green Lantern because... The way he does his constructs is so much more intricate than everybody else's, and it's so much more imaginative because he's not a fighter. All the other ones have been military trained to a degree, but Carrena was chosen by Ganther at random, and Carrena is only an artist, and yet he is the one of the most powerful human Green Lanterns that has ever been, to yeah. the point where he's been able to wield all seven different coloured rings at once which nobody else has ever been able to do. Man. Yes. But this is my point. It's like... <sighs> Green Lantern series, I'm a bit more hesitant as more news comes out, whether to watch it or not, just because I don't know if i got much faith in it anymore. Well, is, is it just kind of like after the whole thing with like Ryan Reynolds and that disaster? or There is that. But it's also the fact that they've tweaked things enough to the point where they skipped over the first four lanterns, who were the Green Lanterns of Earth through the space memes, not the magic memes. So it would have been Hal Jordan, then John Stewart, then Guy Gardner, then it would have been Carl Rayner. And then you would have got Simon Baz, and then you would have got Jessica Cruz. Well, mind you, if you were going to fantasy write this, wouldn't you have, like, maybe... Like for this is like for this being another series. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna do that, I think it might be worth doing a different concept. You know, with like, let's just say Doctor Who. You know, you have different Doctors in different series, right? 
Mm-hmm. Or different seasons, sorry. Um, you could even do a, something like as if, like maybe through half of the season or maybe through like the end of the season, it bleeds into like the next story of the next Green Lantern, you know, as it keeps going on. Because I feel yeah. like you've got to, exp- I feel like you got, you have to go for an origin story for the Green Lantern. You just have to. Of Otherwise, course. People are going to be confused as hell. <laughs> well, this is it. I mean, the thing is, each Green Lantern has different ways of how they gain their ring in the first place. Jessica Cruz has the most bizarre one of all because in the comics, she is, she was a vet uh, she was well she retired from the military because of having PTSD which caused her to have severe anxiety to the point where she couldn't leave her own home and for whatever it means she ends up getting the ring from a green lantern from earth 3 which is where the good guys are bad guys the bad guys are good guys and on that earth, Green Lantern goes by Power Ring. The ring itself corrupts the user because it is the ring of Volthoom, who is yeah. evil, and basically corrupts the user because it's Volthoom that takes over their body via the ring. Yeah. And because they basically latch onto somebody that has like severe anxiety, so the user Power Ring tries to get rid of the ring as much as possible, which is why it goes to Jessica Cruz. Because right. she's more anxious than he is. But the problem is, is that the exposure to the ring also slowly kills the user over time. So, I don't know if it was Simon Bowers or whether it was Hal Jordan or one of the other Lanterns that ended up saving her and ended up converting her ring to an actual Green Lantern ring along the way. But it kind of is counterintuitive because green lanterns are meant to be people with incredible willpower yeah which when suffering through anxiety can be a hard deal to go through because your anxiety takes over your willpower which again is an interesting plot idea for this show but it's a very hard thing to weave in without it over complicating the entire series yeah, mind you, just even the simplest version of it is complicated in itself, so... Yeah, but... I mean, I love Green Lantern, don't get me wrong, but I just... <sighs> I don't know how well this series is going to go. Yes, it's going to be on HBO, but I've said yeah, but in my previous H- video... HBO, it's a bit... I don't know. Well, I said in my previous video about Green Lantern is that I worry that the budget of the CGI may not be enough to do it all justice. (laughs) Well, I don't know if they would be able to like cut corners by actually making an actual costume so then they can focus more on the CGI of the glow effect and the constructs. Yeah, why not make it practical? Like, you have to make it practical. I think that was my biggest issue with the entire Green Lantern because movie. Because it, it just looked like it looked like like Ryan Reynolds in the original was wearing like a green screen suit, but just his head sticking out. It looked like his head was kind of floating on the body. Yeah. <laughs> it the thing is it wasn't keyed up right. But the other thing as well, it's just like why did the suit have to be animated? That was the one thing they quoted in uh, you can Deadpool. Ease, you can easily have it practical. Easy. Yeah, but the thing is, in the comics, the whole point of the costume is it's meant to look like an actual, like, law enforcement suit to a degree. Like, it's meant to have, like, some concept of clothing. Yeah. It may be a construct of their ring, but the point is that these constructs are meant to replicate what they make. So, therefore, it shouldn't look like it's light. It should be something similar to light, but what it's meant to be the light of, if that makes sense. Yes, yeah. But then it's also, my other thing with the Green Lantern series is I wonder what other colour cores they would actually bring in. Because, like I said, there are at least seven other colours that they I'd love to see done, but it's trying to get it done right. Yeah, very true. Because there was a Cartoon Network series, Green Lantern Animated, which was amazing, and I wish they never stopped it, because it was such a great series. And they actually delve into the idea of the Blue Lantern Corps, the Red Lantern Corps, and the Orange Lantern. 
And then that was it. Like, we had nothing on Sinestro, which I was looking forward to. And then they could have bring in Blackest Night, an amazing story. That's, like, the closest we had to zombies at the time until we got deceased. And then it's like the series just went, ah, no, we can't be bothered. But, like, Green Lantern has so many things inside, like, its core idea. And yet they just went, eh. That's it, right? We fudged up. We'll move on. And it's just like, no. Oh. Yeah, typical <laughs> DC way. It's just like, I was like, oh, we screwed up. Let's just try it again. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I well, say, there's. Captain, I'm down to twenty percent capacity. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think this is all just speculation for this week's video. We have not a lot of confirmation of stuff. I mean, there's also going to be a series of Peacemaker that's got John Cena in because he's going to be part of the Suicide Squad movie that James Gunn's doing, which looks amazing. Yeah, but really, John Cena's not going to be in the film because you can't see him, can you? Oh, God. I'm sorry. Don't, I'm don't sorry. you start. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just... <sighs> I'm a wrestling fan. I had to. <laughs> uh... You're just going to see a costume just with no head. <laughs> Boris, can you refill this for me? Nah, nah, he's being a bit reluctant. Oh, Christ. But, yeah, this is pretty much it for this week. I mean, like I say, it's all just speculation. We don't know what there's going to do. It's going to be a while yet before anything really does happen. But, Boris, oh, do you right. have any... Well, other news is that other news is that Mission Impossible is back filming. Oh, uh, I've God. seen like a few of the leaked pictures of the Mission Impossible 52, which I swear <laughs> it feels like. Uh, the filming for Batman has, pick, has picked up again. So the new filming for the new Batman, Robert Pattinson, is up and running. And as far as I know, that's the rest of what's going on there. But also for next weekend, uh, live stream will be a little bit earlier in the morning, morning on the Saturday. Yes. Because for my other channel, for Phantasma Paranormal, I'm going to a haunted hotel. Uh, but for the live stream here, what's the live stream going to be about for the Saturday? Because it's Halloween. We want to talk about horror films, the cringy ones gone by that oh, just make no few. sense. <laughs> I mean, I was looking into it just because YouTube came up with these random film ideas and the one that I've been watching clips of the most lately, because it's just so bad, is Killer Clowns from Space. Oh, my God. I, I actually researched that the other day, and I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> but I'm not saying anything now, because I don't want to spoil it for next week's episode, but it's just such a weird movie. <laughs> but because it's Halloween, we're going to see how goofy we can get. <laughs> yes. But, Boris, do you have anything before we shoot off today? He's not uh, an alcoholic, yeah, honest. Like, and then, yeah, and then just like later on after the cameras go off, we're going to go indulge in our merchant and drinking problem. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but thanks again for joining us, folks. It's been nice to be able to rant, rave and ramble about something for a change. Boris is going to be taken well care of, as usual, by Jack. And we'll see you all next week. So stay safe. Bloody and we'll see you all soon. Yeah.